Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I'm here with the Motorola Zoom 10-inch uh, Android tablet with an NVIDIA Tegra processor, a screen that looks like a mirror when you're, um, when the, the display is off, and um, yeah, so let's take a quick look though. It's got a fairly slim design, weighs about 1.6 pounds, feels pretty good when you're holding it in landscape mode, but it's kind of heavy in portrait mode, especially if you wanted to like read an ebook or something like that. Um, on the back, We've got uh, stereo speakers, which are nice. They're reasonably loud, but can get a little distorted at higher volumes. Um, a camera with autofocus, and the power button, which is sort of an awkward location because you can't see it from the sides. If you're used to using Android phones or other devices, you might be looking around the sides when you want to turn it on, but you have to sort of train yourself to reach around back and find it here. And then slide to unlock. So the claim to fame here is really that it's the first device that runs Android 3.0 and then the first device to be updated to Android 3.1. Right now it's not the only Honeycomb tablet available, but it's one of the only ones officially running Android 3.1. And that means you get a couple of new things like the ability to resize home screen widgets, um, the ability to see more recently running applications and so forth. But uh, overall Android 3.1 doesn't look that different from Android 3.0. It's a little bit faster at certain things. Uh, OpenGL performance is better, uh, feels a little more responsive when you're doing things that involve 3D graphics, and that includes even just here on the home screen. Um, but let's take a look at the actual performance for day-to-day -day things. Um, the, the web browser is probably one of the most impressive features here. If you look at a website like the New York Times, which really has to compress itself to, to work properly on something like a uh, Android smartphone screen, because the screen just really can't show all that content you get a much more desktop style view here. You can zoom in still if you want to, and zooming is pretty smooth and fluid, um, but you don't really have to for the most part when you're viewing it. And, you know, things work okay here in uh, in portrait mode as well, but again, it, it just feels better in landscape mode. Now another thing you'll notice here is that there's a kind of long lag time as you switch from one mode to the other. It takes about two seconds, uh, maybe a little bit less than two seconds, and you know, two seconds isn't a long time in the in the span of the world, but it just it feels a little sluggish when you're doing screen rotation. Um, now, websites that require Adobe Flash are another story because um, with Android 3.1, it can handle 720p video content inside a web page using Adobe Flash. No problem there. When you're trying to do something that's not optimized for mobile or that's not video, it's a different story. So here I am at the LA Times website and I pulled up a crossword puzzle, and you can see that I can interact with the crossword puzzle. It changes um, the rows, but the keyboard doesn't pop up, and so it's sort of of limited use here. And so one of the things that's a little bit annoying about having a more desktop style system where you've got browser tabs, you've got full desktop views, you kind of expect to be able to do what you can do with a desktop web browser, but you can't always. Not all content is going to look just right here. Now another thing that's uh, a little bit interest, uh, well, interesting, I guess is the best way to put it, um, I've used Android tablets running Android 2.2 and earlier. Um, the keyboard is just sort of a blown up version of the smartphone keyboard on those, and it's really not meant for touch typing. Now here you've got nice big larger keys, but still not really ideal for touch typing. You can see it's kind of hard to fit all ten fingers over the screen, even though it's a nice wide ten inch uh, keyboard. The Apple iPad has a keyboard that you can really just stretch your fingers over and touch type. Um, you don't get the same sort of tactile response that you would get from a physical keyboard, but you can basically type at similar speeds. I find that I can't do that here. I wind up doing much more two-finger typing. It's faster than typing with my thumbs on a, on a phone, but it's still not great uh, for typing. I wouldn't want to enter large amounts of text this way. This keyboard actually does work better for thumb typing if you do switch orientation, because then you can just sort of reach across comfortably. It's a little hard to do that when you have to sort of reach like this. Um, another thing I've noticed is that there's a little bit of lag sometimes between when you press a key and when uh, something actually shows up where you're entering text. So, better than the, uh, the previous keyboards, still not ideal. There are some third-party keyboards that might make the experience of typing on an Android tablet like this a little bit better. Um, but in general, while I don't believe the people who say that uh, tablets are for content consumption rather than creation, the type of creation that you might be used to doing, such as 
writing uh, long email messages, blog posts, things like that, you might not necessarily want to do on a tablet such as this. Um, that said, I mean, there are some applications that really do make a lot of sense for content creation here. So for instance, there's an application here called Caustic, which is uh, gives you synthesizers and uh, different capabilities here. And that's, that's perfect for a touchscreen, because you can put it down flat, you can actually play the keyboard, it's nice. The, um, there are third-party web browsers too, by the way, if you uh, find yourself not really that thrilled with the experience of the default one, you can try Opera, you can try Dolphin, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do things here. Now in terms of other applications, some applications are really well designed for this device. Um, CNN, for instance, has an application that really makes nice use of the full screen. Gives you navigation on the side, nice big pictures in the middle, although it's not showing them all right now. Let's uh, switch to the U. Here we go. Um, so you've got nice big pictures, you click, and you can see the full text of the article, videos, and so forth. But then there are other applications that uh, really just weren't optimized for tablets. Uh, one of the worst defenders I've found so far is the Cartoon Network application, which you can see actually just loads a tiny window as if it were on a phone. Um, another one that I find uh, to be a little problematic, since we just looked at CNN, let's look at uh, another news application, the uh, Al Jazeera app. It looks great on a phone when you bring it up onto a, a larger device here, though. The pictures are stretched, they look pixelated here, you've got large amounts of text, uh, I mean, of empty space here, the text is too small, and when you actually click on an article, it's uh, potentially even worse. So, not a great reading experience, really. Um, so, when you can find applications that are designed well for tablets, pretty good experience. When you find applications that weren't, it can be a little bit trickier. Um, same thing goes for uh, reading ebooks. If you uh, look at the latest version of the Amazon Kindle app, for instance, the uh, ebooks look okay. Um, I would like to have a two pane view here. Google Books and some others have two pane views when you're in landscape mode, um, and it really just looks a little bit better. But the um, web store actually, in some ways, is better than the, uh, the website. So you can buy books here, you can browse through things that are available, you've got your top 100 p free and paid books and so forth. So, you know, they, they're, they're almost there. Um, it would just be nice to have a better reading mode, because with this 1.6 pound tablet, it's a little bit awkward to hold it in your hand like this and read it in an ebook. Uh, in terms of games, there are a number of games that actually look great on this tablet. For some reason, there's something funky going on with Glow Hockey. Um, I'll go ahead and put uh, in on my website a video for a game called um, uh, Pinball HD, which just looks beautiful on this tablet. Um, there's some others as well. And again, gaming performance might be a little bit better after upgrading to Android 3.1, but with the NVIDIA Tegra processor, you're, you're really not going to find a faster tablet than this in the first place. So I wouldn't worry too much about speed. My biggest you know, question with this is, since there are you know, dozens, maybe a couple hundred apps that are really well designed for Android tablets, and most of the apps that it runs are apps that you can run on a phone, I kind of have to wonder, you know, is it worth the $600? Is it something that you're going to carry around with you and use on the go when it really doesn't do that much more than you can do with a phone. With another tablet, like uh, say the HTC Flyer, you've got a 7-inch screen, it's less than a pound, it's pocketable if you have large enough pockets. Um, you know, this might be something that you would carry around if you just really want the larger display for reading books, watching movies, doing things like that. But um, the problem with the, with the Zoom is I find that the 10-inch, 1.6-pound um, it just doesn't offer enough of an experience that I'm not already getting from my phone for me to actually want to take it with me very often. There are certain things a larger screen is great for. It's great for sharing pictures, showing things to other people, um, sort of co-viewing videos. Um, and, you know, reading web pages can be a better experience, but I'm not sure if it's a $600 better experience. As Android prices, uh, as Android tablet prices drop, and as more applications are developed specifically for tablets, I think the Zoom and uh, tablets like it could be an excellent buy, but right now it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a tough sell. This is Brad Linder for Lilliputing.